a very scary phenomenon that has resulted in the death of millions of people and has increased since the year 2000 up until 2018 by 30%. And in 2018 alone, it resulted in the death of one million people. Suicide. Not only that, but for every actual suicide, there are 20 suicidal attempts that don't go through, that fail for one reason or another. This is very scary and serious. And although these numbers reflect what's going on worldwide, but guess what? We are part of this globe. And this concerns us as Muslims as well as it concerns everybody else because these numbers include Muslims in them. And therefore, we have to address this issue from an Islamic perspective. What is the ruling of committing suicide? It is prohibited because it is one of the kaba'ir, one of the major grave sins. So how do we know that it's one of the major grave sins? Well, if we know the definition of the kaba'ir, and apply it to any given action, we can then find out if it is or not. Al-Imam al-Dhahabi, in his book, Al-Kaba'ir, as well as many other scholars like Ibn Taymiyyah and others, said, a kabira is recognized when one of four conditions one is fulfilled. If there is a penalty in this dunya, if there is a punishment in the worldly life, for someone who commits that given action, then it is one of the kaba'ir. From, for example, cutting the hand of someone who steals under certain conditions, of course, then we know that theft or stealing is a kabir, one of the kaba'ir. Another thing is, punishment threatened to be given on the day of judgment or in the hereafter. Like, whoever kills a soul without due right, Allah Azza wa Jal said, he will be eternally punished in Jahannam. Another thing, the existence of religious, a religious text that states that Allah curses the doer means that the act is a kabira. And a religious text stating that the person who does such and such will incur the wrathing anger of Allah Azza wa so any action that has any of these fulfilled is defined to be one of the kaba'ir. So under which one of these four does committing suicide fall? In the book of Al-Imam Al-Bukhari, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever consumes a poison and kills himself, he will have this poison in his hand in the fire of hell, consuming it. And whoever stabs himself with an iron rod will have this iron rod in his hand in the fire of hell, stabbing his stomach with it as a punishment. Another text, also in the book of Al Imam al Bukhari. The Prophet 
informed the companions about a man who became injured and could not tolerate the pain of his injury. What did he do? He killed himself. What did Allah Azza wa Jal say? قَدْ حَرَّمْتُ عَلَيْهِ الْجَنَّةِ I made Jannah forbidden for this man. So there are many texts threatening with a certain punishment in the hereafter for the one who commits suicide. And therefore we know that this is one of the kabair, one of the grave major sins. And this is a very serious matter. When someone knows that he is about to do something that will result in his punishment in the hereafter, then he, need to, he needs to think about it. What makes people commit suicide? What makes a person have this suicidal behavior? Suicidal thoughts. Different entities worldwide, like WHO, World Health Organization, and other organizations, listed different matters. At the top is depression and anxiety. As a matter of fact, they stated that 90% of suicide cases result from acute cases of depression. But there is a, uh, a dangerous thing about this depression. Depression can result from different things. Imbalance in the chemistry of the brain, stress, or, and this is the dangerous part, being far from Allah. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ كَئِيبًا سَوْدًا مُظْلِمًا He who stays away or deviates away from my remembrance. He who or she who deviates from the path of Allah will have a depressed life, will lead a gloomy life. Life becomes dark, meaningless, no joy in anything as a result of being far from Allah. And thus, a person sees no use of continuing to live and thus commits suicide. Another reason they list is related to wealth. And this is uh, quite ironic because they listed poverty and richness to be causes of suicide. Those, for example, who lose their wealth, become indebted, they fear the consequence of this. Those who lose their jobs, or look, they're in a long process of searching for a job and fail. This is one type of suicidal victims. And another is those who become filthy rich. They do everything they, they want, they can, but they're empty, the soul is empty. And again, they feel no meaning to life and commit suicide. Consuming intoxicants, drugs, alcohol is another cause. Kids commit suicide. Did you know that? As a matter of fact, the second leading cause of death in children aged 10 and above 
was suicide. Well, that's normal. It's expected. What do you expect from a child who is in, on his laptop or his mobile phone and watches cartoons or movies or whatever that are all aggressive, killing? What's going to happen? Movies and cartoons that suggest suicide, they will just imitate and copy. Domestic violence, child abuse, marital problems are causes for suicide. Cases of divorce when the family breaks up. A child here and a child there and the father and the mother start fighting one another, taking each other to court. And who's lost in the middle? These children. And indifferent of what happens to the children, they start a vicious, far away from Islam fight. Children commit suicide. Or one of the spouses commits suicide. When someone receives a shock, he's brought up on something all his life, and suddenly he's exposed to something that's totally opposite of what he is convinced with or used to. And this happens mostly in practicing conservative families. The, the child, he or she, were brought up to be conservative, religious, practicing, modest, chaste. And then suddenly they become exposed to a society or a community. And this happens to you teenagers when they go from high school to university where it's much broader, much op more open. And then he, re he or she received a shock. Something that 180 degrees opposite of what he or she used to believe. And if they do not remain firm, they start doubting their own faith and resort to suicide. Another cause is when you go to a university or take a job and one of your teachers or your boss at work is super in that field, very intelligent, right? But he happens to be an atheist, for example. And I have seen this in one of my close friends in the university. He was a brilliant engineer. He had memorized one-fourth of the Qur'an with its tafsir and the reasons of revelation. When he took a job, his, his direct manager was an atheist. But he's a wizard in electrical engineering. That resulted in this boy becoming totally influenced by this boss and became an atheist. Now, if he stopped and rejected and started fighting these atheistic thoughts or ideas, he was either going to succeed with the help of Allah or be weak and then go into state of low morale and then resort to suicide or leave the fold of Islam like he decided to do. People who prefer to live alone are vulnerable to suicide because people who are alone have the tendency and the readiness to feel low, go depressed, 
have negative thoughts. And if he does not receive social support or family support, he or she will resort to suicide. There are many other causes that lead to suicide, but these were listed to be some of the most important with an Islamic touch added to it. Ways to counter this phenomenon. Well, it's the responsibility of everyone. Household members, family members, the society at large, and the Imams as well. Awareness must be raised of the consequence, the Islamic consequence, and the ruling of this. Strengthening the faith of people, reminding people with beautiful concepts in Islam like patience, relying on Allah Azza wa Jal, persevering through the decrees of Allah Azza wa Jal, and that whatever befalls a believer uh, is a means of expiating sins and elevating the ranks in Jannah. Reminding people that rizq has nothing to do with your degree or your profession. And that it is from Allah whenever it is predestined to come, it will. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَفِي السَّمَاءِ رِزْقُكُمْ وَمَا تُعَدُونَ In the heavens is your provision and that which you promised. So it has nothing to do with your degree. Now what if you don't find a job in your profession or your field of specialty? Well, fine. Seek provision in anything to put bread on the table for yourself and your loved ones. Don't insist on one thing and then go into the state of depression or resort to suicide because of that. Your rizq is written. The Prophet ﷺ said, and this is reported by Abu Nu'aym in al hilya and classified as sound by Al-Albani. He said, if the son of Adam was to escape, run away from his rizq as fast as he runs away from death, then his, rich, his rizq will catch up with him, just like death will catch up with him. Certainly, it will come to you. Rest assured, no rizq of yours, written, will be left behind and you will go. You cannot depart this dunya without taking everything that's predestined for you. All you have to do is just utilize the means, Allah Azza, the legal, lawful, permissible, Islamically permissible means Allah Azza wa Jal facilitated on this earth. Seeking treatment by the means of Qur'an. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ and we sent down the Qur'an as a treatment and mercy to the believers. And don't think that Qur'an is only used for ruqya when someone has uh, jinn, sihr, magic, uh, evil. Uh, no, no, no. It is also for physical illnesses. The famous story of the companion who recited Al-Fatiha seven times on that disbeliever who was stung by a, or bitten by a, a snake. And after the seventh time, the man stood up, the, the narration said, he stood up as if nothing was wrong with him before that. And that's a snake's poison, right? Another, another very important issue here is resorting to medical treatment. You see, many people are embarrassed, are ashamed to say, well, I'm depressed. I have depression. 
Well, depression is just like having a flu in the sense that it's an illness that needs to be cured, that needs to be treated. So seek treatment. The Prophet ﷺ said, O oh, slaves of Allah, seek treatment. And this is reported by Abu Nu'aym and classified as authentic by Al-Albani. He said, because Allah Azza wa Jal did not send down an illness, except that He has sent down a remedy for it. It's not your fault that you become a depression, a depressed person with depression. Depression patients are just simply ill. So don't shy away and refuse to go and see a psychiatrist or a psychologist because what are people going to say? What can they say? If you get cancer, are you not going to go get treated? If you break your arm, are you not going to go get treated? Well, this is an illness. Get treated. Get cured. Seek medication from its proper source. And I conclude with the following. It's an advice to myself and everyone. If we think that by committing suicide, we put an end to a bitter life that we're experiencing or going through, then guess what? What can, comes after that is far worse than what you just ended with your own hands. Because the consequence of you committing suicide is what you heard as a punishment from Allah Azza wa Jal. Real problems start only after you commit suicide. Remember that that period that you're experiencing this tough period during this affliction, this hardship is short and eventually it will come to an end. Because nothing continues and lasts forever as it is in this life. If you're depressed, if you're poor, if you have problems, there will come a time whenever Allah decrees and it will end and you will go back to normal and even better. Because the crack of dawn, that light of dawn, only cracks after the darkest part of the night. So think positive of your Lord. Have good thoughts of Allah Azza wa Jal. Persevere, rely on Him, trust Him, and you will come out.